Dude, there was a lot of great things about doing the show, Hacking the System. And we did that segment on the Wi-Fi pineapple. And the biggest bummer is that we went to such lengths to make sure that even if somebody went frame by frame, everything was accurate and correct. It was legitimate hacking code. Right, and then, and then uh, of course, the comments are like, they showed a screen and typing and said the word hacking, therefore it's, it's logus. Like Darren from Hack5 went out of his way yeah. at, at DEF CON uh, this year to tell me, he's like, no, no. It was all real. Every single bit of you. it was exactly accurate represented, which, which to be honest, makes me want to flip the table and go full NCIS on this. Like, why, <laughs> why bother to present anything accurate? Just, just bash keys and be like, hack, hack, we hack. I love that your idea of hacking is basically pretending to be a cat. <laughs> do, 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 do. Using the Wi Fi pineapple. All right, we're here with uh, Shannon Morse from Hack5 and Tech Thing. Shannon, Hi. thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Dude, my favorite segment we did on hacking the system was the one about the Wi-Fi pineapple. And now this will be the first time I actually get to experience firsthand uh, interacting with one. Yay. This thing just looks dangerous. This is the, the Wi-Fi pineapple. Yes. It, it looks like something that should not be near any of my technology. One of my favorite things that happened at DEF CON was where our friend uh, Glitch came up and showed us, opens up the case and there is a drone with a Wi-Fi <laughs> pineapple built in. Yeah. Awesome. Why so oh, awesome. Okay. For the uninitiated, what is a pineapple? So the Wi-Fi pineapple is basically a hotspot honeypot and it's a man in the middle attack for wireless. That sounds like the sexiest porno I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> the hotspot honeypot man in the middle. You know, I could say that it is techno lust. It's uh, <laughs> give us some more appropriate terms we can Google. <laughs> because if I run that through the Google, I never that thought I about that, there. but you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I noticed about what you just said is you used a lot of terms that are common to confidence games and scams. Yes. Man in the middle, honey pot, things like that. And so a lot of crossover there. Yes, definitely. Tell us how this works. So you know how whenever you go home or you go to a place that you've connected to previously, your phone automatically connects to whatever node network is out there? Mm -hmm. Well, the Wi-Fi pineapple is going to play a man in the middle to that kind of scenario. So we, whenever you're going out with your device and your device is looking for some network that you're familiar with already, like your home network, right. Brian, say Brian's home network, you go home, your phone automatically starts sending out these pings all over the place, looking for this home network. And I assume your phone is, as long as you have Wi-Fi turned on, your phone is constantly saying like, hey, where's home Wi-Fi? It is. Are you home Wi-Fi? Yeah. Are you home Wi-Fi? And then the pineapple so, says, yeah, that's me. Yeah, you may be far, far away from home and you're looking for Brian's home Wi-Fi and then my Wi-Fi pineapple hears you say Brian's home Wi-Fi, hears your device say it. And so, then it replies back and it says, oh, that's me. You should connect to me. Uh, uh, okay, and so at that point, I would imagine by itself, you would just be connected to a node and you wouldn't be connected to the internet. But because we said man in the middle, I assume we're saying that this is the exactly. connection and it just relays everything. And so what, you, 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 you can save all the data that goes through, you can watch everybody do everything as they're doing it. Oh yeah. That, that's a sinister smile of a, of a, of a hotshot honeypot. <laughs> does, right. does it connect automatically or uh, it, does it say, oh, this is Brian's Wi-Fi and you say, yes, I want to connect on that. How, no, how do you can... get deceived exactly? So one of the really fun things with this is I can go ahead and start up a little device called Pine AP. And this is going to track all of the different pings that's happening in the wireless all around us. So if your phone is looking for coffee shop Wi-Fi and yours is looking for Brian's home network Wi-Fi, then it's going to pick up on both of those, we call them SSIDs. So this is an identification that's for the access point. S SSID is what the Wi-Fi hotspot announces itself to be, exactly. right? Whenever you pick yeah. a silly name for it. Got it. Yeah, and anytime it sees it, it's going to add it to this awesome little pool that I have currently tracking what's going on and the Wi-Fi is around us. Wait a minute, hold on, let me get my phone. So if I turn on Wi-Fi right now, okay. there we go. And it says searching for Wi-Fi networks. Is it giving you anything right now of interest? Let's see. T-Mobile Wingman? No, that's not me. OTA. There's a lot in here. Wow, there's an awful lot in here. Starbucks. So these are all different SSIDs that your phone is currently trying to connect to. It's things that your phone has previously connected to in the past, and, and so it's looking for those. I would imagine that if you just left the pineapple on, especially in a busy area, everybody's phone's constantly yeah. saying like, I'm looking for this Wi-Fi. Now they're mm. shouting out If who you they're... set this up in a city, you can get hundreds in your SSID. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Now, are these just phones and laptops or do you have like IoT devices on here oh, as yeah. well? Oh yeah, IoT devices. If those are sending out pings, I'll pick those up too. I'll Everything. pick up tablets, Anything laptops. Anything looking for a Wi-Fi. Yeah. 
Yeah, wow. your desktop computer. If your camera has Wi-Fi turned on and is pinging for an access point, it'll find that too. And I should preface this by saying, of course, you know, Hack5 sells this product and we don't condone using it for illegal purposes. And I am in a lab environment here with you guys. You have told me Science. it's okay, it's you can hack everywhere. me. And we should talk about, there is such a thing, uh, white hat hacking, yes. penetration testing. You, The only way to know whether or not your locks are secure is to try to break your own locks. Exactly. And this is an important tool. And that's what tool. this is used for. It's used for penetration testing by experts that go out and get hired by companies. And it's also used by me for educational purposes. That's why I'm here. Okay, so let's let's do an experiment just to see how terrifying this is. Okay. Can you pretend to be Starbucks? Yes, I can. So I can go ahead and turn this on so that it accepts clients. Like I currently have two clients connected. Tell me at least one of these is this other computer and not yeah. me. I, I do have this computer currently set up and let me go ahead and log in here. So I have connected to Starbucks in the past. My Wi-Fi Pineapple knows that. So if I go ahead and look through my wireless options up here, I see that I have indeed connected to Starbucks Wi-Fi here and I'm currently connected to the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Okay, so in this case- There's obviously oh. not a Starbucks around here. Uh, uh, yes, no, definitely. definitely. Don't, nobody come here looking for Starbucks. No. I love the gravity of that warning. No one come here looking for Starbucks. <laughs> you don't understand. So to set it up really easily right now, I'm gonna go ahead and change my open SSID over here, which is basically changing my Wi-Fi Pineapple into an open access point that you would normally find at like a coffee shop. Uh, so and, uh, whatever it... coffee shop, no particular coffee shop no. of importance. No particular one specifically. So it's going to go ahead and restart the wireless radios on the device. And then in a couple of seconds, maybe a couple of minutes, you'll notice that it says Starbucks Wi-Fi. <gasps> there it is. There it is. Okay. So now I'm going to, oh, geez. Uh, all right. So look, I'm on Starbucks yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah, totally. See, That's and I'm not even Starbucks careful. I'm, I just look at it and say, Starbucks Wi-Fi. Great. Uh, oh, you're going to hack me? How many bars do you have? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right now I'm connected what looks like to Starbucks, even though there's no Starbucks, but okay. actually it's the Wi-Fi pineapple which is just relaying everything through what, the local Wi-Fi? Yeah, basically. Okay. So I have my laptop connected to your open Wi-Fi here, or your password protected Wi-Fi, I should say here. That was the most audible <laughs> quotey fingers I have ever heard. Your password protected <laughs> Wi-Fi. I mean, how is it that I walk into this room and I'm like, hey, do you have Wi-Fi here? And Brian hands me the thing from his it's a, a, Not ISP. anymore, not anymore. By the time anyone sees this, we'll have changed the passwords to good passwords. Like here's the default No, it'll be good password. passwords. <laughs> will be the actual Password. Okay, so 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 Brian, so this right. is a very rudimentary example, but are you Brian Seven Plus? Yeah, okay, yes. This okay. is my. Uh, it's not a Seven Plus. It's a newer phone. Also, wait, wait, I, so I'm you? not comfortable with sharing all the names of my <laughs> devices. Yes, that used to be me. I've also changed that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it looks like I'm currently connected on one of those Wi-Fi access points that I was pinging out. One of the ones in my pool. Okay. And you are connected to Starbucks Wi-Fi, which was the open AP that I set up on. This oh, this one. is wild. So both of these two devices think that this has a different name. Yes, This exactly. one thinks it's called... Starbucks. And Yours thinks it's Starbucks Wi-Fi. This is amazing. It is whatever it needs to be. Okay, yes. here, let's see what you can find out about me as I just surf around as okay. a normal person well, would. Well, hold on. I need I gotta to tell actually you. turn on the attack to be able to do that. So I can do a whole bunch of different modules on the Wi-Fi Pineapple. And the one that I'm running is called D-Wall. And this was made by, I believe, Sebkin. So if I turn this on... So D-Wall does what? It basically pays attention to all the traffic and... and so and... D-Wall is basically going to make an owned wall of information that is coming from whatever is connected to the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Oh, so it's so just saying, be... here's everything we found. Yep, so D-Wall picks up any kind of data that is passing through if it's unencrypted. It can pick up cookies from different websites if those are not protected correctly. It this can is even bad. pick up websites that you're visiting. Uh, okay, all right, well, can you see what website I'm visiting right now? Okay, so I just started listening on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that run for a bit, and then I'm also going to go ahead and open up some websites on my computer over here as well. So in a few minutes, we should probably start seeing a whole bunch of different websites on the D-Wall module. We're starting to get something. Wait, oh, yeah. we're getting stuff? Geotrust dot com, oh digicert dot com, letsencrypt.org. Oh, these are certificates from one of the websites that probably that you're currently visiting. Oh, wow. So we're seeing the actual certificates from a website, which means that it's probably a very fairly secure website. Will it be able to tell us that Brian is actually playing Hearthstone right now? Because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not admitting one way or the other. <laughs> Here, I'm leaving a very important message on my favorite website. I just posted a comment. 
says it was successfully posted. Okay, I didn't see it, which probably means that that website is encrypted. Ah, oh, it is. It has the S. We talked about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got okay. the lock on there. JasonMurphy.com, you beat me. <laughs> I spent a lot of time making sure my website I was definitely secure. called you a uh, huge nerd, though. <laughs> um, my post from, like, July. Yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go oh, to some, look wait, at that. What, 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 okay, what? So what? I just went to this website that I know is unencrypted. It's, uh, I don't know if I should call them out. I don't know if we should call this one out either, but this was f***ing.com. <laughs> Did you just go to <laughs> Yeah, is that real? <laughs> yes. It's, I, 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 I picked up the pictures from the website it, too. They're friends with, with Frank Muller, the great audiobook reader oh. from, from 15 years ago before he had his accident. I, uh, this is the last time I checked that. It looks so, like the last update was 2003. And it looks like connect.facebook.net. So either your phone is pinging for Facebook in the background, or maybe there's a Facebook cookie on this site. Oh, yeah. wild. There's a WordPress cookie on my computer. So there's a WordPress cookie on this website. Probably that, I'm that one. Yeah. Dustbrothers.com. Oh my God! <laughs> Have you seen what the Dustbrothers the website? These are the music producers from Fight Club. Their website oh, no. is is frozen in time. It's amazing. Oh, that's incredible. Like we found a time capsule. <laughs> this is awesome. I can't believe you're able to see all of this. And it's just scraping pictures oh, yeah. and it's, stuff. It's scraping images from all these different websites. Now it's not going to catch all of them depending on what kind of like encryption and security they're using, but it's going to catch quite a few as we've noticed. Now, what other types of information can you get from here? You can get passwords, I sensitive get information. I can usernames and passwords. I can set up a captive portal, kind of like what you would have to sign on to whenever mm -hmm. you go to a hotel and you have to sign on with your room number. I could track that information and I could make my own captive portal that looks just like it. And then I could find out what room you're in and what your last name is because you'd put it in thinking that it was the actual captive portal. Okay, so at this point, we're all sufficiently scared. We all understand <laughs> you can get all everything. Here's what I want to know. We've said for a long time, Okay. that using a VPN is a good idea. Yes. I want to know yeah. if a VPN will make me safe. So I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna hit quick connect on this VPN and- uh, What is kingofmouths.com? Kingofmouths.com? Yeah, it came from your phone. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I actually literally don't know. <laughs> Justin. Oh, it is Justin. <laughs> it is Justin. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so right now it should be connecting to the VPN. Okay. I assume since this is slow, or maybe it takes longer to establish the VPN connection or what do I, I, I guess maybe. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it, I already have to have the VPN turned on. What's before. happening here is your phone is talking to the Wi-Fi Pineapple thinking that that's the access point. My Wi-Fi Pineapple is connected to the internet over my computer. My computer is connected to the actual access point. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna disable Wi-Fi for the moment and just get the VPN going. Now the VPN is going okay. over the LTE. Now I'm gonna switch back to having Wi-Fi on, and I'm gonna select uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi. So this, this is me knowing that I'm going into a scary neighborhood. Okay. And it says I'm connected. It says you're connected. I think it merits mentioning that uh, the way you utilize the pineapple can, in some instances, be terribly illegal. Oh, of so, course, just like, you know, you shouldn't murder somebody with a kitchen knife. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what website am I on? Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. I don't see it. Yes, it God. looks like your VPN is working. How about now? Nope. Really? Dust Brothers and King of Mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. You all missed out the fact that I'm on the Space Jam oh, site. Dope. <laughs> Wait, oh, dope. Oh, that's amazing. Like the actual yeah. working site? <laughs> yeah. For yeah. the movie Space Jam? Yep. That's still alive right now. It looks like it definitely teleported from the past. So you're not seeing anything I'm looking no, for right now. No, I Hold don't on. see any of it. And what are the best practices that we could use to protect ourselves from something like this just as individuals? Apparently a VPN. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is no, my only like, takeaway is, aha, the, I feel safe. The, one of the most important parts is just don't connect to open Wi-Fi. Because if you're not connecting to open Wi-Fi, this isn't going to catch you. Now, if I know the password to a password protected wireless access point, then I could you know, track what you're doing. <sighs> That's it. This is, this is going to be advanced stuff that we do when you come back in the future. But in the <laughs> meantime, where can people see so much more of your amazing stuff? So you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at snubs, S-N-U-B-S. Or uh, you can check out Hack5, H-A-K-5.org. Right on. Yeah. I'm going to go burn everything that plugs in, <laughs> that has a battery, well, no, that charges. Let me just, we talked about this. We talked about I've this. I've been training. We some talked about this. I swear. Pigeons. I swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to your calm place. Go to your calm place. It's fine. It's fine. 
It's fine. The wires don't have it out for you. One, Superman two, 3 was only a movie. Three, four, it five. Actually... Everybody I in the car, so awesome. come on, let's so, ride yeah, to the right liquor store yeah, in the corner. She said she wants some gin and juice, but I really don't want to. Oh, man. Uh, oh, wait, the Donnie Darko site finally went down. Uh, what else oh, is there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time. The Blair Witch site. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Blairwitch.com? Yeah. I spent a lot of time on the Blair Witch site. Who didn't? It was 99, and I was like, this place was great. it can't be real, right? <laughs> I don't see it. I hadn't seen the movie uh, yet. Do, 